Oh, fuck. What the hell did Zoro just do? Like, let me just say this, right? Chapter 485, let me just say this. When Zoro is, you know, standing like this, arms crossed, and he says, nothing at all. <laughs> Dude, he just took all of Luffy's pain and suffering. He's already near death. And he says nothing at all. <laughs> and we saw Zoro basically pass, look like he's passed out from the pain. And this dude is putting on an act like that. Oh, shit. Zoro, right? Like, all right, all right, all right, I'm going to be straight up with you, right? I always say Nami's my favorite character. Man, I'm a Zoro fanboy now. <laughs> dude. This is so fucking awesome, man. This is so fucking awesome. Like, Zoro, there's like a level of honor to this. And at the same time, because Sanji did say like, hey, I'll take I'll take this too. Tell Luffy to find another cook. Man, look, look, Sanji's cool. And I have no doubt maybe Sanji could have handled some of it. Zoro's cut from a different cloth. Until I see more from Sanji, I'm going to stand by that. I don't think Sanji could have taken all the pain and suffering. Dude. Dude. This is so fucking awesome. And where the honor comes into this is Zoro, basically after Kuma's just looking around, he sees all the straw hats just kind of laid out. Zoro starts to uh, move, and Kuma's going for Luffy's body, and Zoro comes through with a sneak attack, and that's when we find out that basically Kuma is the cyborg like Frankie, but he also has the devil fruit abilities, and Zoro says, like, damn, I'm starting to lose hope here. <laughs> it, it, it's so telling that that happens, but one of the things Zoro does is, in a way, he appeals to Kuma's humanity. I didn't expect that to happen. I didn't expect it to happen, but because he's, I think he's, he's a pacifista or something, and I took that to mean he's like a pacifist. He's somebody who doesn't enjoy fighting, so that one for me, I was, I had him like as this bloodlusted dude who just had it in check, and he was like, look, I'm carrying out a job, right? Guess he's more like Aokiji than I thought, and this is what's telling, right? After everything that happens, he says, well, he is your son, Dragon. So, does Kuma have a connection to Luffy's father? Is he working with Luffy's father? Because this is the thing. If, if, if Luffy's father is as crazy as they're saying in terms of his position, in fact, he's leading a rebellion, having somebody like one of the seven warlords would be a nice out. It'd be a way for him, him to get some type of insight on the world government. So, that would be pretty, pretty interesting right there. There was some type of connection. Or maybe they were part of the same crew and they just went separate ways. I'm not sure what the connection is. But this would probably be something Oda just touches on like 300 fucking chapters later. Because Oda has it where Zoro dragged his sword across the ground. And all of a sudden that exact spot ends up being like a marker for someone else to find the straw hats. And to trace the like... Shit like that. Like, Oda just does something so minuscule that you don't think matters, and all of a sudden it comes back into play. But I want to know how Zoro taking on Luffy's pain and suffering like this will help. Is this going to give his bounty a bump? Because Zoro lived through it. And I love the fact that when Zoro appeals to Kuma's uh, humanity, he says, look, if I, I, I have an ambition, I want to be the greatest swordsman, I'm not as famous as Luffy, but when I become the greatest swordsman... I'm, gonna, I'm going to have a bounty just as high as his. And Kuma says, you're ambitious. But Zoro says, like, look, I've proven to you I'm a man of my word. That's when Sanji tries to step in. And Zoro begs for Kuma to let him take his head instead of Luffy's. And I love the line where Zoro tells him, like, look, what's the point in living to reach a dream if I can't even protect my captain? If I can't protect my crew? That's why Zoro could run his own damn crew, man. Zoro could run his own damn crew. That is so beautiful. And the fact that he took on Luffy's pain and suffering like that, all the injuries that Luffy took on, and you know that Luffy was using gear two, which adds to the pain, that tells me that if Luffy and Zoro fought, Zoro might be durable enough to where he could last long enough in a fight with Luffy where because he's using this head here, 
he might be able to beat Luffy. That's that's very telling, man. I still think Luffy's the stronger of the two, but I think Zoro has a puncher's chance in a battle with them. So that's what I'm going to end my chapter review. I'm going to ask you guys, current Luffy versus current Zoro in this part of the story, how close are they in terms of a power scale from a 1 to 10? If I put Luffy at a 10, I would say that Zoro's probably an 8.5. That's about where I put him. Where the gap in power is significant, but it's not too big to where Zoro gets his Luffy's balls dragged across his face. But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video, guys. Have an awesome day.